And I'm a big fan of television. I love shows like Dexter that you know take risks, get rid of, of main characters, and I think it keeps it interesting. And that's why I think Lost was so crazy and interesting as well, is because you really, literally, never knew who was going to go, who was going to come back. And I think that that's what made it so exciting with our own season finale, is that we had a rebirth of a couple characters, and um, and I think it opened a whole new passageway to see people that we that we've uh, quote unquote lost before, but um, it is really hard because we are very much a family even though it is a business. Um, it, it feels like a very personal business and, um, and Sarah Canning is an incredible, incredible actress, not to mention just a beautiful woman inside and out, so it was very hard, but who knows now that Jeremy can see people of the past, maybe, mm -hmm. or all. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, thank you that you are here. Thank you, I'm happy to be here, thank you. Hi. Hi. I'm Gabrielle Nidali, and I have a question for you. I read about the sad story of your childhood friend, and your decision to shout loudly some important information about uh, the living disease. In your opinion, what do we have to do to get involved with people's sensibility to this unknown disease? My biggest, what she's referring to is a very dear friend of mine named Terry Racer that I grew up with in Orlando, Florida, um, contracted Lyme disease uh, in her first year of going off to college. Um, well, I think, I mean, it's sometimes hard to find out exactly when it's been contracted, but that's kind of when her first symptoms started um, affecting her body. It was into her sophomore year. And because of misdiagnosis after misdiagnosis, um, she, it became its most chronic form. Lyme disease is it's contracted from a tick bite. Very simple sounding tick bite. And, um, and there's a very, very many strains of it. And so, uh, which makes it a very complicated disease to differentiate because there's some symptoms that affect one person will be completely opposite to another person. So it's hard to consider a disease that doesn't have just one symptom that affects you. Um, my biggest thing was that my friend Terry you know, four years later, she's still bedridden, and she finally it, it came to you know discovery that it was officially Lyme disease. And my own um, guilt was that, and not guilt, but I just my shock was that I had never heard of it. I never heard of Lyme disease. I didn't know what it was. I asked my mother, and she's like, "Yeah, it's a tick bite, and cure it with antibiotics," which is true. You can actually cure it with antibiotics if you find out that you contracted it, you know, very quickly. You find out, and then you go to the doctor. You can't cure it with antibiotics, but if it lies dormant and, and just slowly starts, it, you know, once it's embedded into your body that far deep, it's really hard to get it out. And so my biggest, um, my first step forward was to kind of begin to educate myself, and um, and you know things like the fact that Lyme disease continuously gets misdiagnosed with Parkinson's. I mean, it really can just completely debilitate your body. Um, the biggest thing was just to create an awareness within my own self that it exists. And if, you know, if, I, if anyone can just know that that disease exists, it, it gives, I feel, her a voice. And there's been a lot of people that you know, I've run into, we literally went to grade school, middle school, high school together, and people that you know, I've run into from that, and they're like, how is she? I'm like, she's got chronic Lyme disease. I mean, it's not good. And I'm like, oh, what is that? It's just like a tick bite. And I'm like, that's exactly what I thought. That's exactly what I said. And so it's really just creating awareness to the extremity of what this disease can become and the fact that it exists, it's a real disease, and if, if we know about it and you catch it early on, if, and the thing to look for is it's called a bullseye rash. It's a red dot and it's a red ring around it, but only a certain percent of, pe of people actually get the bullseye. And so um, it's really just being aware. If you live in an area that has ticks, check for ticks. And if you feel faint, and, um, and you just don't feel good, and you know that you've been bitten by a tick recently, go to the doctor. So there we go. I, I can just ramble on and ramble on. So <laughs> someone give me a bell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, thank you for that question. Um, I'm just trying to stay alive on the vampire diaries. <laughs> no, I was, uh, I was actually talking with, um, with a group of wonderful people earlier, and just in the small 
uh, yes, the meeting room, aka the, the therapy room, it feels like. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, it, it is funny. It's, it, I, that question comes up a lot of like, what's next? What's next? And the whole thing is, you know, how do you, how do you know what's next? I don't know. And my whole thing is, as an actor, you just want to keep working. So I hope to just keep working, and, and whether that, you know, that from the Vampire Diaries later on, if that extends to film or a different television show, or who knows? I just or theater or you know become a mind. I don't know. <laughs> you know whatever inspires me and whatever you know as an actor, it's just not nice, nice to be working. So we'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you from your mouth to God's ears, honey. Thank you very much.
And I think everyone else does such a great job at their own characters that it is as it should be. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Candice. Hi. My name is Anna Yancy and I'm from Mallorca. My question is, uh, which is the best and the worst part of to be an actress? The best and the worst part? Um, the best part, my favorite part is it's continuously a challenge. Um, I'm still very new, so I'm still trying to figure out. I think you never stop learning. I think that's also another really wonderful part. Is there's, it's, I think I'd find it very hard to peak as an actor because the you know kind of the, the slogan is the jobs and the work's never done. Um, so I find that very inspiring, very challenging, very cool. Um, the worst part is that. It, it is your it is your body it is your temperament that um, you're working with every day. So it's very easy to take work home with you. It's very easy to take home to work with you. Um, you know, it, there's just a whole level of responsibility that you have to the people that you work with and the job to you know stay in shape, feel good all the time, be on it, ready. You know, camera ready is a very daunting. <laughs> can be very daunting words, but um. But if that's the worst thing that you have to deal with, um, you know, and that's that's when you make really good friends with your hair and makeup department and the lighting. Always make good friends with the lighting department. <laughs> is what I've learned. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Candice. Hi. Um, I'm Marina, and my question is: What do you love the most about yourself, and what do you like and do you dislike the most? Of myself, mm -hmm. what I like the most about myself, um, I'm very proud of my parents, and as I get older, I see more of them in me, and even the things that bug the crap out of me about my parents, <laughs> um, I'm still very honored to have pieces of that in me, in my my nuances and in my habits, um, things that I. I don't like about myself, um, I think it's just, it's not necessarily, <coughs> excuse me, I think it's just the trials and tribulations that come with being in your 20s, and just, you know, and I think it's just being more sure, you know, very, very vague, simple things, you know, I, um, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I, I feel you can't be such a harsh critic on yourself because otherwise it's a miserable existence. So, um, I don't know, just figuring it all out, I guess. That's it, that's it. I'm like, now I'm like thinking, geez, whew, what do I, oh yeah, doctor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh man, um, it'd be crazy. Um, a lot of sons, a lot of boys. Mm. <laughs> um, I can't really picture them doing a crossover, but uh, yeah, I think it would just be a lot of demons and a lot of boys. <laughs> First of all, I've got to say you've got good taste in TV with Dexter and Supernatural. Um, I know that you got really shy yesterday about your singing, but I wasn't here, and I absolutely, you've got the most beautiful voice. Please, would you sing? Yeah. You've got the most amazing voice.
question is um, if you not uh, actual where do you uh, like uh, to work where is your dream of work what um, I, I never thought that I would say this because I, I grew up, my, my dad's a cardiovascular surgeon and I never thought that I'd ever want to be a doctor. That's always the running joke as a doctor's child is, so are you going to be a doctor? What kind of doctor are you going to be? And um, I was always like, no, no, I'm going into the entertainment business. <laughs> my poor, poor parents. Um, but yeah, now every time I've gone home, like I've gone with my father for the past couple of years uh, to watch surgeries. And I love, I love it. I love it. It's very, and I, can, I love any kind of like specials on, on Discovery Health. I, I love you too. Oh, <laughs> well, thanks. So yeah, I probably want to be a doctor. Oddly enough, never thought I'd say that. Thank you very much. Thank you. What she said. Um, no, I don't. I don't. Um, I think that the character needed an evolution of sorts, and whether it was, you know, becoming a supernatural being or having some kind of sense of enlightenment, um, which I, I think the biggest shift that needed, that, you know, was eventually could happen with the character was, or I hope could happen with the character, is have something happen, something you know, dramatic enough that's going to force her to take accountability for her actions and, and see life from a different perspective, to essentially grow up. And, um, and the fact that they used her turning into a vampire, excuse me, as that platform for her to grow up, I think was really exciting. I was very excited. Yes, we love it, Tom. Yay, thank you. Thank you to the writers. <laughs> Everyone videotape that, please. <laughs> Hi, Candice. Uh, I'm uh, Sarah from Czech Republic, and I just wanted to ask if you could tell us some uh, funny moments or awkward moments from shooting. Oh, man. Those are always really hard. It's like, yeah, too. I know, I know. And I feel like we should all at this point just have pocket ones for every time we get asked. It's just a lot of funny stuff, you know? It's just, there are really long days. You know, everyone gets pretty loopy. Um, but the. <laughs> You know, it's just like things like before lunch. If you're doing a scene before lunch, it's like everyone has to be dead quiet. Like you can hear, literally the sound stages are so, you know, you can hear the vibe, you know, the sound so much that if you just open a chip bag from like the other side of the sound stage, you can hear it on set. And like, and everyone's like, gosh, like who's eating again? Like, you know, it's because everyone has to be quiet. Everyone just wants to go to lunch and everyone's hungry and you have to think of all these crewmen and the lighting and the, you know, everybody. And, and um, all it takes is like one giant like stumble gurgle, like like you know in the middle of a take, and everyone's just sitting there, you know, especially because only if only the actors can hear it, the boom guy can hear it, or boom guy Trevor, and everyone's just kind of, and you're just trying to say something serious, like I told you not to say that, and then all of a sudden you hear a and you're trying not to like laugh, and you got to stay focused, you know, just weird little things like that. They're just, you know, whenever you're like in a super serious, serious scene. I mean, that's in the and there's yeah, and they're just like there's one of our um, one of our camera guys just had, for some reason had this issue. I, I hope it ends up on a blooper reel. It was at a rap party blooper reel. He just kept walking, he just not remembering that we were shooting. And so we'd all be we'd be like in this big scene, like, you know, like why didn't you do this? Or da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden like he would just walk in the middle of the scene and just like stand there and start erasing his board. And he'd be like, hey, and he'd be like, hey, what's up? Like, well, the, the cameras are rolling. He's like, oh, and he like ducks, and you're like, no, that's not. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just goofy. It's a, you know, put put a hundred people in a in a room for you know six hours and try not to want something funny to happen. <laughs> okay, thank you, Raj. Thanks. Hi, um, my name is Amparo. Uh, could you tell us which is your favorite kind of music? Uh, five songs you have in your iPod right now, or something we should be listening to? Oh, man, that's hard. Um, I've been in an Otis Redding phase right now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my, my soul cuddled. Um, I've just been listening to a lot of Otis Redding. I, I, my, one of the best presents I've ever gotten is a record player. I recommend it. 
Um, I still don't have a coffee table, but I probably have over 100 records at this point. Uh, I, I've been listening to a lot of Otis. Um, I've been listening to Patsy Cline on vinyl. I've been listening to um, a lot of Al Green. He just calms everything down. If everything's stressed, I just put on Al Green's greatest hits. And especially like on set, if it's like late, it was like, you know, right when wrapping everything up. And you just can't get angry with Al Green playing. Try. I dare anyone to try to pick a fight when Al Green is playing. It's impossible. Um, otherwise, currently, you know, uh, what else have I been listening? I don't know. That's kind of it. I've been I've been traveling for I've been living out of a suitcase for the past over two months. So I haven't really sat down with music. Music is very like sit down and listen to a thing for me. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Honestly, the, the best part, of, the weirdest part about everything is that nothing's really changed. I mean, obviously this wasn't normal from before, <laughs> um, but I don't know, I've kind of always worked within the business, but on, on the outskirts of it, and, and so, I, I don't know, it's, it is just, it's very bizarre. Um, but, but yeah, I, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I feel no pressure to not walk outside my apartment with, you know, I can walk out, no makeup, like, and, sloppy, you know, workout clothes and just running. I mean, it, we, the great thing about Atlanta is not only, oh, sorry, I'm trying to like turn the chair, there we go. Um, not only do we have like this, such huge amount of space, you know, for our locations team to find these epic locations for us to shoot at. And we have, you know, giant warehouses to fill with our sets. But um, it does offer kind of, sort of anonymity. I mean, no one really cares. I mean, they care. I mean, it's great when people come up and, they, you know, they're like, oh, we love the show. It's wonderful. Um, but but it, it hasn't really changed other than that. Um, I know the boys probably get a little bit more of it. It's been interesting watching the journey, but to, like how it's affected the lives of, of the men and the lives of the women. Because um, honestly, I, I don't feel like even if I go out and, you know, go out to to dinner, go out to a bar, you know, it's not like an onslaught of anything. But the boys, you know, it's a little bit more, especially because it is, it is a show that, that both men and women watch, but, you know, it's very high rated amongst a lot of young women. And so, you know, they just get really excited. <laughs> and so, um, so that's been interesting. But for me personally, besides a couple, you know, complimentary comments at a grocery store here and there, um, it's not, yeah, even, it was really funny. I love my grandmother. I love, love, love my grandmother. Um, it, it was like two, it was after the show was on the air, it was after Thanksgiving, and there's a, a shopping day called Black Friday in the States, where after Thanksgiving, it's like the biggest shopping day in the country. Like, people go and line up in front of stores at like three in the morning to get deal, like it's crazy. And I'm, I'm not into it. It's like an anxiety attack waiting to happen. But um, but we went anyway and just like shopped around a little bit it was later in the day and it was super super packed and my grandma kept looking at me and looking around she, and she kind of looked at me and she's like Candace nobody's recognizing you <laughs> and I was like thank you grandma <laughs> but at least I can put food on the table <laughs> on my own that's cool um, that's the biggest change is that I I. Um, I can, um, I feel a little bit better about spending a little bit more on fancy dinners. It's been the biggest change in my life. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Candice. I'm Janine from Austria. Um, my question is, um, you have vampires in, uh, in Vampire Diaries and a witch and all this magic. Do you believe in magic? I think you have to believe in magic. Um, Yes. Have I ever encountered any spirits or anything like that? Not to my knowledge. I have so many friends that have had all these amazing, you know, crazy stories of ghosts and these supernatural things or these moments or these just revelations and I just haven't experienced them, but um, I, I want to believe that they're out there because otherwise, you know, why live in a world without magic? Thank you. Thank you.
Alright? And this is what I think you would do. So thank you guys very much.